Hello, this is Arden Kirkland with another video for week two of the D4L community module. Did you watch the satirical YouTube video from The Onion before you started watching this video? I shared it with you in this lesson, so if you didn't watch it, stop this video here and go back and watch it right now. Okay, so why did I have you watch that video from The Onion? Well, other than the fact that it's just funny, I think it points out an important factor to consider when using social media. You have to be flexible. You never know what platform is going to become obsolete or unpopular, so you have to be ready to move to a platform that is popular and up to date. You may also need to cover your bases and use more than one platform at a time to reach different community members that congregate naturally in different places online. And in an instructional setting, you also have to think carefully about how social media does or doesn't fit into your pedagogy. In choosing appropriate social media tools, it's also important to note that each one has a different tone. Here's a take on a classic way of explaining different social media platforms. How do you represent your donut on each one? The original source for this is in this week's additional resources if you want to really take a closer look. Sure, this is somewhat tongue-in-cheek, but it does give you a good sense of the differences and maybe it helps make it more clear which is appropriate for the learning objectives you had in mind, when the donut is whatever your community is supposed to be learning about. You'll also need to phrase your discussion prompts and other posts differently for different platforms. We'll come back to this toward the end of the lesson, but I thought this was a helpful summary to share now. So. How do you choose which platforms are most appropriate for your community? One of the major sources of research in this area is the Pew Research Center, and I highly recommend that you visit their website, linked in the additional resources, and look at the reports this data is pulled from. They had done a table like this for their 2012 study, but not for 2015 or 16, so I had to take the data and make my own table. Since I first did this for 2015, the numbers are up and the demographics have changed a bit, which is an important reminder that it's a good idea to keep on top of this research from year to year. Also, their sample size for 2016 was smaller than 2015, so they didn't report breakdowns by race or ethnicity. So where those demographics are mentioned here, it's using the 2015 data. These last three slides have all given you some things to reflect upon for your own project. So let's take a break here so you can get into your workbook and take some notes about how all of this relates to your library community and your intended audience for your instruction.